Even though I love E3D's hot and silicone socks, they have been causing me quite some issues in the past. Today I'll show you how I designed my own silicone sock and cast an improved version out of high temperature silicone. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored in part by Skillshare. In my very first video on this channel, I actually talked about how to use E3D silicone socks on the original Prusa i3 Mark II. If there wouldn't have been these protective sleeves, this channel might not even exist, because this first video that I posted got quite some views right from the beginning, whereas the following ones didn't do that well. If I wouldn't have gotten these very motivating views, I actually might have stopped making YouTube videos right after the start. Since then, I basically have been using silicone socks on my hot ends all of the time because they help keep it clean, but in my opinion, way more importantly, they stabilize temperatures and lower the cooling effect of the part cooling fan. So the first version of the silicone socks really only had a tiny hole where the orifice of the nozzle is. This was, in terms of cleanliness and isolation, a great idea, but caused problems when you printed parts that warped. If you only slightly crashed your nozzle into a part, the sock could move over the nozzle and the rest of the molten material doesn't go anymore into your print, but causes a big blob around your hot end. If you have ever used a silicone sock, you might be familiar with that look. Yeah, let me know your stories in the comments. E3D improved the design and released a new version that had a cutout for the whole nozzle and that's a bit worse for thermals, but still works well. Before we continue, a word on today's sponsor Skillshare that tremendously helps me invest my time in these YouTube videos and finish some of my projects way more efficiently. I'm currently working on some home automation projects using the Raspberry Pi, but I had very little experience working in Linux, connecting sensors to the single board computer and programming on it. Marco Schwartz's course on how to get started with the Raspberry Pi helped me learn all the basics about the system and covers numerous small projects in his 27 lesson course that you can find on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, technology and more. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to everything. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Join the more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare and with the link in the description you'll get a 2 month free trial. So why not give it a try to reach your goals and support the channel at the same time. Over the last 2 years I've actually been using the second version of the silicone sock but still had a couple of occasions where it came loose and caused quite some mess. In my opinion, the problem is that it sits quite loose on the hot end due to the many cutouts. Some use wire to hold it in place, but since I change my nozzles quite often, that would be too much hassle for me. Instead, I'll be designing a reusable silicone mold in Fusion 360 and then cast new ones in high temperature silicone that can be heated up to 450 degrees Celsius for short periods of time and won't be harmed at continuous use below 300 degrees Celsius. I've never been doing molds before, so this was quite an interesting learning process for me and could be used similarly for other applications like smartphone bumpers. The cool thing about silicone molds in comparison to other molds that get filled with rigid material is that due to the flexibility of the material, you don't need to comply to conventional mold rules like draft angles and undercuts. Your cast silicone parts can still be demolded even though you need to flex them a bit, which gives you way more freedom in design. I won't be showing you the whole design process with every sketch because that would take way too long and I iterated it quite a couple of times. Instead I'll be talking about the approach I took to get to the final design. If you want to take a closer look at it, you can download the Fusion file using the link in the description. By the way, if you guys like what I'm doing right here and want to see more like that in the future, then make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and have selected the bell. Alright, so the basic idea behind the approach I took for creating the silicone mold was that I at first sketched the real parts, so the um, well hot end block and the nozzle. 
Then I designed the silicone sock around it so that I have a reference. And then I used the silicone sock to design the mold around that silicone sock. And this is actually the basic way I took with that design. So the approach I took to create the silicone mold was kind of pretty simple. I basically just started out by designing a big block of material, which was roughly the size of the later mold. So bigger than a silicone sock. And then I simply used a Boolean operation, this one right here, where I subtract the silicone sock from that block. So now I have a cavity in that block, which represents the negative structure of the silicone sock. So the, basically the mold itself. The only thing that is now still necessary is that I need to cut the block into separate parts that I can later demold my uh, cast silicone sock. So this actually wasn't too hard. I just uh, sketched a couple of planes and I used these planes to cut the block into separate pieces. And then I just added a couple of holes, a couple of studs that everything is held in place in the end. The main operations that were, in my opinion, really important for creating that mold are the combine command. The combine command is a really handy tool where you have two bodies that overlap and that you can use to merge them together, to subtract them from each other, or even to get the intersection of these parts. So I used that a lot. The other thing that I used was split body. Split body is an operation where you can just split one body with a plane, with a sketch, with a surface or something like that. And this is what I used to cut the parts into pieces. Then I had a couple of issues with tolerances and in order to increase tolerances on some of the surface, so just to increase the gap, the press pull tool is a really handy tool where you can just select the surface and with a negative offset, you can kind of make a hole bigger. With a positive offset, you can make a hole smaller. And this is also the same if you are applying it, for example, on surfaces. So just like here, you can just push it wherever you want. As I said in the beginning, the really cool thing about this approach is that the mold is now still referenced to the silicone sock that I designed before. And this is in a way cool that if I change something on the silicone sock body, this will be also changed in the mold itself. And that makes design iterations way more easy and way more straightforward because you don't change like a surface or a dimension on the mold, but you change it on your desired part. And I'll show you that for a second. So let's just activate one of these sections right here, which is really handy to let, to take a look on the inside of the part. And the thing I want to do is to increase or to decrease the fillet that we have down here right at the nozzle. So what I will be doing, I go into the sock component or I actually activate the sock component. Let's just hide the section for a second. So what we want to do, we want to change the fillet right here. And since I don't want to go through all of the construction elements that I have down here, um, a really easy way to find the construction component that created that fillet is just to select the fillet itself. So if you select it, for example, right here, you see these three small bars above this fillet command. And that means that this fillet was created right here in the history. So I go on edit feature and if I change the size of the fillet to, for example, 0.5 millimeters, this is not only changed in the, in the silicone sock, but if we activate our section again, you can see that also our mold was changed. And this is really pretty handy. You have to be aware this is not working all of the time. If you add new surfaces, if you delete surfaces, if your changes are too big, you might need to reintroduce a couple of references in your history, but Fusion 360 will show that. It all depends on how robust your design process was. And uh, there are some specific design roles and guidelines you can follow 
that this is easier or that there's a higher chance that this will work out in the end. But as I said, this is a pretty nice procedure and you can even apply it on many other components and parts in your design. All right, perfect. After designing, I printed all of the parts on my original Prusa i3 Mark 2.5 in Spoolworks White PLA. Print settings don't need to be fancy, but for higher details, you can play around with smaller layers and even a 0.25mm nozzle, as I also used it for one mold. The material I chose for this project is two-part high-temperature silicone. This stuff can withstand temperatures up to 450 degrees Celsius for short periods of time and can be used even for casting tin. It's not particularly cheap at 23 euros for 500 grams, but that could make you over 100 silicone socks. There is also the high temperature bonding and sealing compound around that others have already been using for similar parts, but the process is in my opinion way more messy. It smells and sticks and it's just a mess to use, even though it's way cheaper. Casting silicone only bonds to silicone itself and nothing else. So if you spill some, just let it cure and you can just peel it off. I've been working with resins in the past and am just so pleased how nicely this stuff is to work with. The assembly process of the mold is pretty simple. Just add the sides around the core and put on the top and bottom lid. Everything is then held in place by a couple of M3 screws that are thoroughly tightened. During the making of this video on the silicone socks, I actually changed the design of the mold and the sock a couple of times. The nice thing about 3D printing is that you can iterate so fast and learn that way. The first version of the mold was just too flimsy and nothing was properly held in place. The second one improved on that with additional studs and lips on the top and bottom lid, but unfortunately was way too tight to assemble without rework or force. I fixed the tolerances in iteration 3, which was already working very well. As some last minor tweaks, I increased the thickness of the top plate so that the filling holes are bigger and act as risers. I also increased the size of the lip a little bit that it sits even more thoroughly around the block. The mixing process of the silicone is pretty straightforward. I just poured equal parts of compound A and B into a small dish and measured the amount with a precision scale. We only need around 2.5 grams of the silicone per sock, but since some spill and leftover can't be avoided, I mixed quite a bit more. In my case, 8 to 10 grams in total gave me a nice amount to work with and makes filling the syringe way easier. To the mix, I just added a dab of silicone pigments because the standard pale red tone just looks horrible. After thoroughly mixing everything, I tilt the dish a little so that the silicone can settle in one corner and I leave it in that position for a bit so that the bubbles can rise to the top. Then I just use a 10mm syringe in which I very slowly suck the mass while trying to avoid sucking in air. If that happens, directly push the bubbles out and start filling it again. When that's done, I close the end of the syringe using a finger and pull the plunger all the way back to create a vacuum. This causes the bubbles to get bigger and eventually rise to the top. After that, I quickly start filling the mold nice and evenly until the silicone comes out of the other side. At this point it's good if you have prepared too much material so that you can push more material into one side to remove as many bubbles as possible. The sock can then be removed out of the mold after 2 hours at room temperature. I just removed the screws and then separated the mold piece by piece. It will need 24 hours in total to be fully cured. So the first cast I did on camera wasn't perfect and the whole upper lip was basically a big bubble. I then added an additional bubble trap on one side that should help you get rid of some of them if you let the mold cure at a slight angle. I did a second one and this came out perfectly. Due to the low viscosity of the silicone, flashing can't really be avoided with a 3D printed mold, but that's easy to clean off. Silicone is a very interesting material because it flows in every last pouring crack and gives you a perfect negative of the surface it was poured on. 
Just look to which details you can see the layer lines and every small printing error. Really impressive. And that's basically it. We still need to use flush cutters to add slots on the side where the cables need to come through. This manual process is actually an advantage because it leaves the other side fully closed and therefore way less flexible. So I've been printing with this one and another one I made for the Volcano Hot End for a couple of weeks and didn't have any fatal failure so far and at the temperatures I've been using them they don't seem to be impacted and are still as nicely flexible as in the beginning. Let me know what you think of this project and for which application such a reusable silicone mold might be useful as well. Download and take a look at my files and make something awesome on your own because this is how we learn. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed the video then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support me in making more of these videos then consider becoming a Patreon or support me in other ways. Also take a look at the other videos on my channel. Auf Wiedersehen and until next time.